Hello, my name is Sarah. Today I'll be taking you through how to make a dishcloth using waffle stitch. You'll need 8 ply 100% cotton yarn, a 4.5mm hook, a yarn needle and scissors. My yarn for today is 8 ply Callista by Sheepies. I'll be using a 4mm hook as I find this can be a little thinner. My tea for today is Twinings Earl Grey tea, because of course. And I'll be working with US terminology. The main stitches are double crochet, front post double crochet, chain, single crochet, and slip stitch. Okay, let's get down to business. We'll begin by chaining 21 stitches. One, two, three, four, etc up to 21 stitches. The first true row will start two stitches from the hook. Complete 20 double crochet along the chain. Be careful of your tension as you go. This is tricky even with practice, but the later rows are easier. I will fast forward through the middle of the row to speed up the video. Pause as you need to. Once you have 21 stitches, including the initial two or three chain, you will chain two to begin the next row, which counts as a double crochet at the start. Turn your work and we will begin row two. The first stitch of row two is a front post double crochet. This means you will be working your hook behind the first stitch of the row below and then completing a double crochet as normal. The next two stitches a double crochet and then we'll do another front post double crochet. Repeat this pattern all the way along. Front post double crochet, double crochet, double crochet. Front post double crochet, and repeat all the way to the end. When you get to the end of row two, you will do a front post double crochet on the second last stitch, and then a double crochet in the top of the chain two from the very beginning, which is why I recommend you may want to do three chain at the very beginning. Chain two to begin row three, then turn your work. You'll start with a double crochet into the top of the front post double crochet from the row below and then complete two front post double crochet in the next two stitches. You'll notice that they line up with the row below in the opposite direction. Where there was a double crochet, you'll do a front post double crochet and where you do a front post double crochet, you will do a double crochet. So that's double crochet and then front post double crochet, front post double crochet and then double crochet repeated all the way to the end. finishing with two double crochet in the last two stitches. To start row four, chain two, turn your work and you'll start seeing the waffle pattern appearing.
As with row 2, you will do a front post double crochet in the first stitch and then two double crochet in the next two stitches. Then a front post double crochet followed by two standard double crochet. This is the pattern you will repeat all the way through until you make a square. Finish with a front post double crochet and then a double crochet. Chain two and turn your work and we'll begin the next row with a double crochet. And a front post double crochet. Then a front post double crochet. and then a double crochet for the next. This pattern will repeat row two and three until row nine, and then you will do a final row like row two before beginning the border. And the row with two double crochet in the last two stitches. Row 6 is just like row 2, so you'll start with a front post double crochet, and then a double crochet, then a double crochet. Front post double crochet, double crochet. Finish the row with a front post double crochet and then a double crochet. Chain two to begin the next round, then turn your work. Row seven will be a double crochet and then two front post double crochet. Double crochet and then two front posts double crochet. Repeat it all the way along, ending the row with two double crochet. Now don't forget your cup of tea, because it's a very important part of crocheting. On to row eight now. So you'll chain two to begin the next row, then turn your work. Row eight is just like row two, so you'll do a front post double crochet and then two double crochet into the next two stitches. Front post double crochet and then two double crochet. Repeated all the way along.
We'll finish the row with the front post double crochet and then a double crochet Chain 2 to begin row 9 and turn your work. Row 9 is like row 3 where you will do a double crochet and then front post double crochet in the next 2 stitches. Repeat this 6 times until the end. You'll complete a double crochet in the last two stitches. Chain 2 to begin row 10, which is the last row of the waffle stitch for this cloth. Row 10 is just like row 2 and will finish off this last set of squares. Front post double crochet and then double crochet then double crochet. Repeat this until the end. For the final front post double crochet, then a double crochet in the last two stitches. Next, we will begin the border. The border is simply single crochet all the way around, doing a single crochet, chain one, then single crochet in each of the corners. At the end of row 10, chain 1 to begin this single crochet and then we'll be doing a single crochet all the way around. Each double crochet row counts as two single crochet. So into the top of the first double crochet you will do a single crochet and then into the base of that same double crochet you will do another single crochet. Then into the end of row 9, you'll do another single crochet into the top and then another single crochet into the bottom. Repeat this all the way to the end of the row. At the end, I do an extra single crochet, chain 1 and then single crochet. When crocheting along the base, I insert the hook into the middle of the double crochets as it creates a tidier finished product. Some patterns will have you do the border into the chain, but I find that sometimes stretches the chain out and leave it bubbling. We'll do a similar thing when we're going along the top of the row. Single crochet is normal, one into each double crochet between the gaps all the way to the end. I haven't tied in my ends yet, so it does get in the way here, but you may tie it in now if you find that it's been difficult. I try not to crochet over the top of my ends as they sometimes wriggle free, especially when it's a dishcloth as it'll get a lot of work. So as before, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, single crochet on the corner. Then continue doing a single crochet in the top and bottom of each of the double crochet all the way to the end. You may have noticed I find this yarn a bit splitty while working with it. I think it was mostly because of my nerves while recording. But sometimes it can be a bit tricky to work with. 
I made a blanket using this yarn and I found it quite good, but with these smaller projects it's a little trickier to work with. This is the corner I choose to do my loop on, so I will chain 20 stitches to create a loop and then do a single crochet back into that same stitch. You may want to do more or less chains, depending on how you will hang up the dishcloth later. As with the base of the dishcloth, my single crochets go in between the double crochets on the row below, rather than into the top of the double crochet. This just allows a more consistent look across the whole thing. Chain one on the last stitch, and then slip stitch into the beginning single crochet. Tie off, and we're almost there. It's just your ends to go. So let's tie in our ends. Leave a tail nice and long so you can sew it in very well, as you don't want this coming apart during dishes. I love my waffle dish cloths. It might sound like a silly thing, but they have made washing up a lot easier. I made my first one three months ago, and I only just made my second one so I can rotate them through the wash. I also have a scrubber I made using the coaster pattern with a loop to hang it on the sink for when I need to scrub something properly. And there we have it, a dishcloth perfect for scrubbing, washing, and everything else. You can use this same pattern as a face washer if you're using a soft yarn, and these can be washed in the washing machine or dishwasher to your preference. The waffle pattern is effective at ca capturing food bits and grime, but is also easy to clean. Because it is made with 100% cotton, you can soak it in boiling water without any worry about damage, just throwing it in with a normal load as you find necessary. Some yarn has a bit of a coating, that means it isn't very absorbent at first. Just give them a wash and you'll find it much more effective. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to see your creations, so please tag me on Instagram, Facebook or Twitter at Shiny Crochet. If you want to see more of my creations, be sure to subscribe. I have many more on the way, though they do take time. Have a lovely day.